Hey everybody, John Gucci Foley, and welcome back to the High Performance Zone. We got such tremendous response from the pre-release of our audio book that I'm doing it again for chapter eight. And that's on the glad to be here debrief, but there's added content here. So I went into studio. We've actually looked at uh, not only the debrief, but fearless success. We've got some questions, some added bonus value. So make sure you go to johnfoleyinc.com backslash audiobook and be the, one of the first ones to get this, this great digital content. Now, having said that, here's chapter eight, the glad to be your debrief. You know, we've done this with thousands of organizations now. I have done this over 10,000 times, and that is a glad to be here debrief. The single most important tool that you can use to increase performance, both as a team, and here's the really cool part, as an individual, I do debriefs every morning, every night, constantly through the day with meetings, and uh, you're going to get the inside scoop here. So in this chapter, what we're going to talk about is how to have the mindset in the process to build what? Chemistry, to build camaraderie, to also look at refining and getting better every single day and celebrating our victories. We'll talk about the five dynamics, which is first a safe environment, check your ego at the door, lay it on the table, this ownership and I'll fix it mentality with the glad to be here. Okay. One of my favorite and most important chapters and probably one of the most important tools we all can use. Ready? Let's dive into the tool of glad to be here debrief. Ready? Hit it. Chapter eight, glad to be here debrief, secret sauce. An organization's ability to learn and to translate that learning into action rapidly is the ultimate competitive advantage. Jack Welch, former CEO, General Electric. As you've learned in the previous chapters, the Blues put extreme emphasis on preparation and focus, all of which come before the show. But the real power of the Blue Angels and of any high-performance team, is the ability to learn and adapt quickly. There is a special tool available to every individual and team on the planet that will help you achieve this goal. I call it the Glad to Be Here Debrief. This tool can, by itself, establish a mindset and a culture of improvement. It's something elite teams know well, and we used it every single day that I was a Blue Angel. The debrief may seem familiar at first glance, but when you practiced in the way that I'm going to describe, it becomes one of the biggest opportunities to elevate individual and team performance. This is the key, the final step in the Diamond Performance Framework. It's where you take everything that you've created in the previous steps, beliefs, brief, center point, trust, and imbue it with a process focused on continuous improvement. The debrief was a mechanism that tuned our minds and made every action a step towards improvement. It came toward the end of the day, but it was actually the beginning of our next performance. It was part of our daily process. It wasn't something we reached for when things went wrong. We did it every time we flew. It was built into the culture and DNA of the organization. In business, there is often a negative bias associated with having a debrief. I believe this is because most individuals and organizations debrief only when there is a mistake, a negative outcome, or a fault to find. I've seen this in companies around the world. Their fear-based approach is the opposite of what we are doing on the Blue Angels. On the contrary, our goal was to drive fear out of the organization. That's why we created a safe environment in a debrief where we could all open up and share the wisdom of our success and our failure side by side. Furthermore, we use these gatherings to cultivate positive interpersonal dynamics within the team. This is about far more than the analysis of root causes. Debriefing in this way instills chemistry and camaraderie in the team. It provides leadership opportunities for everyone on the team. It gives people the chance to reinforce the positive and raise expectations. It's more than a team building process. It's a team building mindset. Many might wonder, if you had a great performance, what need is there to deconstruct it? That's the key question here. If organizations can change this negative mindset and implement a process that works, it can be a huge game changer. In sports and business, debriefing sessions have led to wins and increased bottom lines, but the benefits are bigger than that. In the right setting, this tool has the power to save lives. 
On the blues, the extreme environment we lived in demanded it. In healthcare, in society, where lives are on the line, this is what you need to create elevated execution. It may seem counterintuitive to examine your victories alongside your failures, but by focusing only on the negative aspects of performance, you are ignoring some of the most valuable information. This is a huge misconception about a debrief, that it serves only to examine your failures. With those kinds of associations, it's not surprising that so few people take the time to do it. In our Blue Angel debriefs, we examine the good and the bad together. We even called them goods and others. That distinction points to the overall positivity of this approach. We focused on the aspects that went well so we could continue to improve. When we shared areas that were out of parameters, we made contracts to adjust our actions in the future. By laying our shortcomings on the table in this way, we employed the wisdom of the entire team to confront challenges as they arose. In addition to realigning our actions, the debrief was a place where we acted out the interpersonal dynamics that made us such a special team. These specific standards of bearing defined the way we treated one another and how we interacted as a team. This made the debrief far more than a meeting. It was a transcendent experience that gave us an identity and that played a major part in our success. It empowered accountability to become personal responsibility. And with personal responsibility, accountability became a given. What makes a glad to be here debrief different is the unique safe environment. This can be achieved when the perspective is shifted from negative review to positive growth. The sole purpose of a glad to be here debrief is to achieve continuous improvement by elevating and sharing information that draws on everyone's experience. Everyone's participation is important, which is what makes having a safe environment so critical. The end goal is to take all available information and bring it into the next cycle. When you start to debrief in this way, the whole experience is imbued with a grateful mindset. This is how the highest performers approach the world, in business and in life. A debrief without gratitude is actually a negatively focused exercise. You're looking at what you can fix, but only from a negative perspective. While that component is good and can be useful, if it's all you do over time, you start to beat yourself up. In that situation, the process of improvement becomes a source of stress as opposed to a source of excitement and focus. The glad to be here mindset changes everything for a team. In this state of mind, you can talk about things that need to be fixed through shared beliefs and with a higher sense of purpose. This gives everyone the ability and energy to be more resilient. Inside a Blue Angel Debrief At the end of a Blue Angel air show, all six jets buzz the crowd in delta formation, blowing smoke over the cheering fans before we pitch up one last time for landing. This is the final maneuver of the day, but we like to say that the show isn't over until we've taxied the jets in front of the crowd and wheels are in the chalks. From the moment my reels touched the runway and I decelerated on the rollout, my mind went from a super high state of focus and back into a normal state. This always felt like a natural moment of relaxation, as if you were letting out a big sigh. It was a moment to be grateful to have had that incredible experience but I never got too completely relaxed because the day was far from over. As we taxied into the chalks, all six jets parked in perfect unison before the crowd. I ran through my checklist and loosened the heavy straps that held me down in the seat while I flew upside down. On the boss's signal, we opened our canopies in perfect unison. As the fresh air blew into the cockpit, I heard the crowd cheering for the first time. I stepped out on the ladder and saw them waving from behind the rope at the crowd line. As I entered the scene, going from the extremes of the flight to the joy of the crowd, I felt like I was coming out of a cocoon and into the world. I climbed down the ladder and found my crew chief standing at attention in front of the jet. We shook hands and gave each other a knowing look. This was how we acknowledged the special bond between us. Words were rarely spoken or needed. We did the same after every show. The bond we shared was like professional athletes in an arena, where we focused on each other, even though we were surrounded by thousands of fans. After a quick exchange with our maintenance supervisors, we went to the crowd line. This was always my favorite part of the air show. 
It was the moment we embraced the public and engaged in our mission to inspire and serve as ambassadors of goodwill. I love meeting the kids and their families, getting a chance to shake their hands and to talk to them. When you see these magnificent planes doing magical things, it's easy to forget there's actually a human in that airplane, flying with the stick and throttle, just like back in the days of early flight. Putting a face with the jet gives people a sense that's what we're doing is distinctively human and magical at the same time. It contributes to the awe factor. To anyone watching an air show, this might seem like the end of our day. The cars that filled the massive parking areas start to snake away. The planes are refueled and buttoned up, and everything has an air of winding down. But in truth, this was the most important part of our day. We transitioned from being in public and returned back to our inner sanctum, back to the same conference room where we had conducted our pre-flight brief. The sign is still on the door, Blue Angels only. And as soon as we enter, the atmosphere changes. This is the beginning of a glad-to-be-here debrief. When you first walk in, you can immediately sense whether it was a good or a challenging show. Either way, we get down to business very quickly. A hush gradually falls over the room. The room becomes dead quiet as each pilot turns inward, collecting their thoughts. You can see people writing notes on the picture of the show site, preparing their thoughts and comments about what just happened. You can tell that we are about to do something we all take very seriously. In this moment, everyone is locked and loaded, and the debrief begins. Debrief Cadence There are many ways to implement a debrief process. Time is the first challenge that comes up. Perhaps the main opponents to this type of debrief are those who think there isn't enough time. In my experience, this can be easily overcome. Once you've gone through the experience, you begin to understand the ability of this practice to change the way your team interacts. That said, if time is a major issue, the process can be adapted to fit different time constraints. There are many opportunities, large and small, where an exchange of information will contribute to the future's success. I like to break down debriefs into three types. The first one is a real-time debrief. It can be as simple as a quick phone call or stopping someone in the hallway to discuss something that happened. This is quick and powerful. It takes into account the same perspective and components that I've described above and condenses them down into an instant. In this mindset, unexpected moments become an opportunity to debrief and share information. Another type of debrief is a periodic debrief. This is perhaps the most common. A periodic debrief is based on regular intervals of time and could occur weekly, monthly, or even quarterly. These regular intervals are used to inform and to update while simultaneously focusing on improvement. Whether it's daily for the teams that interact that often or quarterly for larger departmental actions, periodic debriefs are one of the most common types. Another kind of debrief is marked by occurrences. I like to think of it as a post-event debrief. The Blue Angels do this after every air show. This can also happen after a sales meeting or after a large conference. The key is to hold it immediately afterward or as close to the event as possible. Fast feedback is strong feedback. By examining an event from all angles, from multiple perspectives, you uncover valuable information that can inform how you plan and act in future events. Once you understand where and when a debrief like this can take place, you need to adopt a basic structure and apply it to those moments. What follows is a framework I've created that mimics what we were doing and achieving when I was a Blue Angel. Within this framework, different teams will employ slightly different approaches, but it's important to have a basic sense of what's going to happen, such as who is going to speak and when. At a high level, there are two basic components that create the cadence the general safe, and specifics. Think of each part as a sequence. In each one, participants get the opportunity to comment on the subject being discussed. Participants come into the debrief ready to deliver a general safe and then to discuss their personal specifics. Part one, the general safe. A general safe is a simple statement that serves as a point of entry into the debrief where each participant takes a turn making a brief statement. It gets its name from what it contains, a general overview, 
and also any safeties you might have to share. This round gives the team a sense of the collective mood and allows for a quick input and exchanges that might detract from the next session focused on specifics. Sometimes it's important for a leader to go first and set the tone. At other times, a leader should go last so as not to influence the opening comments. Regardless of the order, the debrief will give each individual the opportunity to make opening comments about their experiences during the event being discussed. These comments are an overview that gives the team insight into the mindset of the person who is delivering them. This general safe round aligns the team's focus on the subject at hand and sets the tone for the entire meeting. It is an opportunity to reveal key information about yourself that might help the team as well as acknowledge and reinforce others. Since the round of specifics is upcoming, these comments should be short and to the point. The opening comments of the debrief set the tone and can strengthen or detract from the entire engagement. For that reason, General Safe allows for multiple levels of input in a short space of time. There are four basic components for a strong General Safe. Number one, feeling statement. This is a chance for each individual to give a quick general overview of the event or subject that focuses on personal feelings. This opens you up to the team, giving them an insight into your mindset and how you're thinking at the moment. Be open, honest, and transparent. Number two, safety and I'll fix it. Every team needs standards that define their performance. In the brief, you need to know those standards because in the debrief, we determine where we've strayed from those standards. A safety is a variance that did have, or more importantly, could have had a big impact. It's an opportunity to show the team you are out of parameters. Be the first to acknowledge your own mistakes without fear and address them with, and I'll fix it statement that shows the team your awareness and your commitment. By saying this, it doesn't mean that you'll never make a mistake again, but it shows that you are aware of the parameters and you're taking corrective action. This builds trust and inspires personal responsibility. Number three, acknowledgements. This is where participants address what went well. Give credit and praise to individuals who have done well or speak of something you want to reinforce. This is about sharing praise in a public setting. A simple thank you can be very powerful. Number four, glad to be here. End your general safe with these four words every time. They signal that you are finished and move focus to the next person, but they do far more than that. The brain learns from repetition. The more you say these words, the more real they become. The statement reaffirms your commitment to the team and over time, it can remind you of your purpose larger than self. It's an acknowledgement for your thankfulness to have the opportunities and challenges that life presents. While emotions may vary day to day, the intent is to stay aligned on a positive mindset. Number five, oh, by the way, optional. After everyone has had the opportunity to give a general safe, Open the floor to any reinforcing or additional comments that were triggered as a result of the participants' statements. Sometimes the round of general safe uncovers small things that can be addressed with a, oh, by the way. As your debrief practice develops, these steps will flow seamlessly and create the groundwork you need to get at the core issue. Try to keep comments both quick and genuine. Part 2. Specifics. After everyone has had the opportunity for general safe, it's time to get into specifics. If the general safe is the spark that ignites the team and sets the appropriate mood, then specifics are the engine that drives the airplane. The general safe is adaptable depending on the size and scope of the debrief. The specifics, however, will grow from the nature of the subject. This is where the debrief opens up. Each individual goes through the checklist or notes they have prepared. The team will have the opportunity to respond, debate, and contribute to every point. Specifics should address what went well, what didn't go well, and what could be improved. This is the meat of the debrief, and as such, the contours will vary from team to team and from subject to subject. The subject is not what defines this practice. What makes a glad-to-be-here debrief different is the perspective. It's not what you're talking about, but how you're talking about it. Years after I left the Blues, I began to analyze the keys of our success, 
And I realized that all of our gatherings were defined by specific interpersonal dynamics. That's why we kept the sign on the door and treated the room as our inner sanctum. These intimate approaches to human interaction are the key to getting the most from your specifics and unleashing exponential results. There are five dynamics of debrief. Number one, safe environment, which is respect. Number two, check your ego, humility. Number three, lay it on the table, openness. Number four, own it and fix it, accountability. Number five, glad to be here, gratitude. Dynamics of debrief. Here are the dynamics that define the process and allow you to turn a debrief into a tool for continuous improvement. Safe environment equals respect. This dynamic is critical for optimizing communication. In a safe environment, each individual perspective unites to create the clearest picture of what went well and what didn't. Without this dynamic, individuals can withhold information out of fear, which creates blind spots that can inhibit improvement. In a glad-to-be-here debrief, every member of the team, regardless of experience or position, is deeply valued and should have the respect of everyone participating. In the presence of respect, all ideas are liberated and allowed to enter the discussion. Lack of respect can lead to crippling fear. Fear of speaking out or fear of failure. A safe environment is critical. Without it, important ideas can go unsaid. Even the smallest comment can trigger a conversation that ends up solving a major issue. In the debriefing room, there's a shared responsibility for the tone and the outcome. Every participant has the power to make the room a safe, positive space where everyone gathers to improve. A safe environment is not a given. Leadership matters, but ultimately, this dynamic is something that a team builds together over time. But ultimately, this dynamic is something that a team builds together over time. Once established in this way, it has the power to improve every interaction, both inside and outside the debriefing room. Check your ego. Check your ego equals humility. Elite teams are made up of high-performing individuals, but not all high-performing individuals are able to come together and form an elite team. Individual talent fuels team performance, but letting your ego take over in the debrief will always have a negative effect. High performers have egos, but the difference is that we're all in this together. There's a need for humility. You have to acknowledge who's in the room and give a clear sense of roles, but you want to be able to level the playing field. There's still a respect for others' positions, but in a glad-to-be-here debrief, rank is laid on the table in the spirit of team results. There's still respect for others' positions, however. It's a balance. When ego, rank, and status are left at the door, the debrief becomes an open environment, fueling an atmosphere of psychological safety and openness that is necessary for optimal results. A productive debrief requires a spirit of humility and selflessness. There is strength in vulnerability. When the second dynamic, check your ego, becomes a reality in your debrief, the outcome is personal humility. Efforts become unified and the team takes on a strong character and a reputation of its own, one that is focused on the purpose larger than self. By checking your ego at the door, you are basically saying that you are committed to the team over self. And because of this higher commitment, you're going to be someone who is an example of all the attributes the team represents. Removing your ego from the equation supports each of the other dynamics of the Glad to Be Here debrief. If you are contributing to a safe environment, it has to be with others in mind. If you lay it on the table, you're offering your perspective as a team learning opportunity. Freedom from ego will allow you to take accountability and cultivate a mindset of grateful generosity. Lay it on the table equals openness and honesty. Even when the previous dynamics are present, it still takes action to get the most out of the debrief. Lay it on the table is about action and speaking without fear of criticism or reprimand. Great leaders help their teams align on decisions so that there's buy-in and commitment from everyone, which results in joint accountability for results. The third dynamic of debrief, lay it on the table, 
conveys a willingness of everyone in the room to suspend hierarchical thinking in the interest of results. This type of openness requires humility, transparency, and fearlessness. That only happens if there's a safe environment of respect. That's when teams can celebrate wins and face difficult challenges in ways that activate excellence. A climate in which people are capable and willing to lay it on the table is a powerful motivator. It allows everyone to shine and step up. They can speak their minds without being bullied or steamrolled. Own it and fix it equals accountability. The fourth dynamic of debrief, own it and fix it, has two parts. When you own something, you're more apt to take good care of it and fix any problems as soon as you see them. You don't wait for someone else to fix it because you own it. It's your responsibility. High-performance teams are made up of individuals who don't just accept ownership, they take it. When you have personal responsibility, accountability is a given. By owning specific tasks, the results of a project, good or bad, come into play in the actions of the individual. A culture where everyone has skin in the game is one that is far more effective. Sometimes it's the subtleties that take us over the goal line. Ownership means getting it done, whether that means adapting or being proactive. Own it and fix it is also a matter of pride. This is true both for the individual and the team. When a team succeeds, every individual on that team succeeds together. Our victories and our failures become common property. And when that becomes true for your team, there is a huge opportunity to increase performance. Glad to be here equals gratitude. If a safe environment is the dynamic that makes everything possible, then glad to be here, the fifth and final dynamic, is the game changer that triggers extreme performance. These four simple words encompass an effective debrief. When people bring a glad to be here mindset to the table, It sets the tone for the buy-in and the ownership of outcomes. Gratitude is the secret sauce for this kind of continuous improvement. It's the energy that allows you to sustain greatness. This approach to excellence would not be complete without it. It's a simple saying that sets you apart in personal and professional environments. It changes everything. It allows you to pick up clues and take appropriate action. A number of studies on the effects of gratitude confirm a correlation between thankfulness and positive results. In one series conducted by the University of Kentucky, gratitude was shown to increase pro-social behaviors and lower aggression in various groups. That's exactly the kind of effect that teams need, especially in an open, honest environment where everything is laid on the table. Gratitude is a social emotion. It binds us together and strengthens our bonds, regardless of the nature of our relationship. With this mindset, teams can more easily process negative feedback and turn it into positive results. Other studies show astonishing personal benefits to expressing gratitude. In one study that has been emulated many times, University of California psychologists discovered that participants who regularly express gratitude report higher levels of well being. They exercise more and recorded fewer visits to the doctor. When we are actively grateful, it activates new pathways in the mind and changes the way we see and understand the world. A grateful mindset changes our perspective. It helps us spot opportunities, both to help others and to realize success. It can boost our potential to be creative and innovative. Gratitude changes the game and changes your world. Applying this mindset to your debrief practice is critical. It gives you a new perspective on the entire process. As I've said, organizations typically employ a debrief when things go wrong, thus bringing a negative connotation to the process. The glad to be here mindset changes that perspective and reveals opportunity even amid setbacks. In addition to a fresh perspective, a state of joy and gratitude has a calming effect that stimulates new thoughts and ideas which might otherwise be lost. Diagram. Diamond Performance Framework. Number one is belief. Number two, brief. Number three, trust. Number four, debrief. The outside circle. Commit, focus, execute. Glad to be here. The debrief has three main points. Feedback, celebrate, reassess. 
coming full circle. The Gladbeer debrief can only be fully understood within the context of the Diamond Performance Framework. As the last step in this cyclical process, the debrief is key to rebooting the system and kicking off continuous improvement. This is the inflection point where the past and the present come together to create a better future. Nothing creates greater results in the future than an effective debrief. The debrief utilizes everything that has happened in the previous steps and puts it through a structured positive review. This step is critical to maintaining both the process and the mindset you need to achieve higher performance. A grateful mindset changes our perspective. It helps us spot opportunities, both to help others and to realize our success. There's a rhythm to the Diamond Performance Framework. The debrief allows you to reassess and elevate your belief levels, which brings focus to your highest potential. With elevated expectations, the brief allows you to prepare for your best action. Building high trust enables execution with commitment. And finally, the debrief allows you to process all of that information and imbue it with gratitude. This is the flow of high performance. It's a spiraling up process, which inspires a state of focused awareness that brings new power each time the process repeats. As the steps become habit, they create a forward pull that makes higher and higher performance possible. The cycle gives you the structure you need to achieve flow, but that's only the beginning. Eventually, the pursuit of excellence will take you far beyond what you thought was possible into a space beyond high performance, where we can engage with our natural state. In this space, it is possible to see the awe in everything and to experience a life of magic. I know this from experience. There is a place beyond high performance. Let's go there.